God gives seed to the sower, bread for eating, and the Bible says he'll increase your store of seed. Why does he want you to have more seed? He wants you to act like he does. He wants you to be generous on every occasion because it opens people's hearts. God's empowering you to prosper. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda. Welcome to the program. Did you know that more millionaires were made during the Great Depression? Really? Over 15 million Americans were unemployed during the greatest depression that we've ever had. But at least seven small businesses were also started during that same time that have produced more than $31 billion to date. That's a lot of money. Forbes wrote a study on these entrepreneurs and found that when unemployment rises, self-employment goes up as well. These entrepreneurs became known as survivalist entrepreneurs because they created businesses to take care of their families. And today, no matter what you're going through, listen, God has a plan, an idea to help you provide for your family and to thrive. God has big ideas worth billions of dollars, but you have to know how to tap into that, how to hear them. Well, today I've got great news. We're going to talk about that. And Drenda, you're with me today. We're going to help them understand how do we hear God's big ideas. Yes, Gary, you wrote a new book called Your Financial Revolution. Yes, I did. The That's Power awesome. of yeah. Generosity. And you share some of that information in here. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, let me just ask you, what is the power of generosity? Wow, that is the entire purpose of the book. And we're going to find the Bible talks a lot about that. But the power, there is a grace power that generosity unlocks that sets everything in motion. Well, let me just talk about how this works for a minute. Let's just kind of set the stage mm -hmm. because we need to understand first that God needs money. That's us. He needs money. God needs so money. You need to explain that. God, how, see, if everyone well, knows. God created everything. He owns the cattle of a thousand. Yeah, years. but he doesn't Why have does money. Why does he need money? Well, he doesn't own money. He doesn't have any money. Actually, the money, according to Luke chapter 4, money is created by the kingdoms or the nations and is owned by the nations. God doesn't own any money. He can't counterfeit it. He can't just take it, create it. It is owned by men, people in the earth. People own kingdoms money. Kingdoms are stamped on it. Every piece of nations. money has a kingdom stamped on it. So he doesn't own it, but he needs it because it's the currency of the earth realm, right? Because well, let's put ourselves in his position. He has a big job. He's on a rescue mission to reach people. Now that costs millions and millions and millions. Right, the so, gospel's free, but there are ways that you have to get it out where, there. Yeah, where's he gonna get the money right. to pay for the rescue mission? From people. What, his people, only his people, mm -hmm. right? But let's also understand about God in this perspective. We find a parable in Luke, I mean, Matthew chapter 25 called the parable of the talents. I'm sure, I'm sure you've probably heard it before. I know we've, we've all heard it before where uh, a, an owner was going away and had three servants that he gave money to to manage for him while he was gone. And one he gave five, mm -hmm. one he gave two, and one he gave one talent or a you know, bag of gold, so to speak. Okay. Well, he came back and held them to account, and the one that had five did what? Became ten. Ten, right. And the two became? Four. Four, and the one did what with it? Do you remember? He buried it. He buried it in the <laughs> because ground. Because he thought the master was a hard taskmaster. That's master. right. He had a wrong picture of, of the master. He, right. You know, it says that he said, you're a hard taskmaster. You're harvesting where you have never sown. And it's, it's going to, you know, it's not fair. So the master did something unusual, which is not politically correct in our day. What did he do? Well, when he settled the accounts, the one, the guy that had the one talent, he buried it. Remember? Right. He took it from him and gave it to the guy that had The most, ten, <laughs> yes. Not the guy with four. See, everyone wants to be even, right? So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. God, you, did, you made a mistake. The or guy, the mindset is that you yeah. should take it from somebody who has more and give it to someone who has that's, less. That's the mindset. Which is socialism too, right? Well, <laughs> that's exactly how that works. But God is not socialist, praise God. Yes. He's not. <laughs> He's not. Why did God give that one talent? He took it away from the one guy. We know why he did that. He didn't do anything with it. All right. He, the Bible says he's wicked and lazy. He took it from him and gave it to the one with ten. Hmm. Why? You have to you know tell the me answer. Why? Why did God do that? Well, where would you invest your money? In with the, the guy with four a, or the ten? The one that can turn it into the most. Exactly. See, God is profit motivated. 
He is profit motivated. He's now, Gary, give, that doesn't fly in a lot of religious circles. I'm sorry, say the Bible that. says that. God is profit motivated. Yes, he is. God needs money, okay? And he is profit motivated. Uh, he is looking for people that can produce the greatest return on investment because he has things to get done in the earth realm. Okay, so mm. we're just setting the stage now. I know that kind of threw people maybe. Right. Well, God the commodity is people. The most valuable thing to God is people. He has any and everything else at his access, but people's hearts, people, we're trying to reach people's yes. hearts. Now, it costs money to do everything in the earth, throughout everything. Right. Even watching this broadcast, you know, we, everything costs money, as everyone knows. So God has big bills to pay. He has a big assignment. He's on a rescue mission for people. And so he needs money. And that's the first thing I want you to think. God needs money. Yes, he does in the earth realm. It kind of makes your head tilt a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. We, little we bit. think of, okay, he God is sovereign. He knows everything, has everything. He doesn't. He needs my money. I don't get this. He doesn't have it. He doesn't yeah. have it. He can't counterfeit it. It's in the hands of men. He can help people create and capture it, but he can't just take it. All right. So God uses people. God uses people. Just like the enemy uses people. Of course. Of and course. God needs people to sign up for his assignments. Yes. He's in the people business. But now we're talking about how to pay for it right now, okay? okay? Because there's a, there's a major key here in this thing about generosity. So I'm going to go to a story in Luke. When Jesus has been water baptized at the River Jordan, he comes into his hometown, Nazareth. He goes into the, the synagogue and picks up the scroll of Isaiah, and he begins to read it. You remember the story there, right? Right. Okay. And then he reads through here, and they're listening to him. You know, they know him really well. They, I mean, he, he grew up in that town in Nazareth. And he says this to them in 23, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we've heard that you did in Capernaum. Now remember, Capernaum becomes his headquarters, not Nazareth. He leaves Nazareth. He goes to Capernaum. That's where his ministry headquarters is. So he's telling these guys, you're going to hear about some great things happening over here at Capernaum. And you're going to say, we want to see it here, right? He says, I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there are many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. All right, now he's in their face. He's going to say, you're going to hear all this, but you know, you're not going to receive my word. And he says, this is like it was in the day of Elijah when God had to send Elijah out of Israel. He sent him to Zarephath, which was a Canaanite city outside of the nation of Israel, to help take care of his assignment. Okay, so Elijah is God's man, his prophet, mm -hmm. right? And he has to be funded. Every assignment has to be funded. The brook dried up. There was a drought happening. And we find the story over in 1 Kings chapter 17 of the actual story that he's referring to. And so the, he is at a brook, it dries up, and God directs him now to a new location to be fed and taken care of. So just think of God's assignment. Elijah is God's assignment, okay? He has to be funded. He has to be fed. And something happens here that's amazing. He comes into this town where he was directed. There's a widow there who's gathering up sticks. He talks to her and finds out that she doesn't have any food there. In fact, she, this is the last meal. She has enough for one more meal. And then she is going to, that's it. And he says, well, let me read the text to you so you understand what happened. So he says this in verse 13 of chapter 17. He says, do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. Get a glass of water for this prophet. But first make a cake of bread for me from what you have. Bring it to me first. Then go make a cake for yourself. Which just naturally hearing it sounds a little bit self-centered or selfish. Exactly. It, it, it sounds wrong. I, I can remember hearing that and thinking, oh, it's, yeah, but he asked a, for her to take care of him. Well, there's there's a, a there, principle there's there, right? There's definite reasons he did that because when she gave him the cake first, her meal changed kingdoms. It Good. changed jurisdiction, became, came under the, the ministry assignment that Elijah had and enabled God to legally multiply it, okay? So mm -hmm. he, he, he had to get the first one. Good. Brought all of it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom. All right, so the Bible concludes the story that her meal didn't run out. Right. There was enough bread for her and Elijah. Let me paraphrase what, what our point is. There was enough food for God's assignment and her family. God's assignment mm -hmm. and her family. What is the fear of giving? 
that you're not going to have enough. Exactly. But by right. giving to the prophet, she not only took care of God's assignment, her family mm -hmm. was well taken care of as well. You follow me? Right. Okay. So how did she get that, that opportunity? God gave her an idea, gave her a business, gave her something. Well, he, right? he multiplied the flower. Right. I'm going back here. Elijah, how did he get to her house? God sent him. Now you there. would realize you would agree that her him coming to her house saved her life. Right, yes. Saved her life, saved yes. her family's life. Yes. How did he get there? God sent him there, right? Why did God send him there? Because he knew she would do what he asked. Exactly. And this is what he was saying to that hometown of Nazareth. They had no faith. Right. He was saying, well, hey, in Elijah's day, God had to go outside of Israel to this lady over here in Zarephath because she had the faith mm -hmm. to believe what God said. Sent God sent Elijah, the prophet. He carries the word of God. Mm -hmm. God knows who is going to yield to his objective. He knows who he can, he can trust, right? There's he been knows, tested to be generous, to do what was right. He knows who he can trust to fund his assignment. He's going to send them the big ideas. Mm. He looked across the nation of Israel. There was no one. Wow. But he saw <laughs> this woman. Wouldn't you like to be the woman he saw? Yes, yes. Obviously, right? Yes. And that's what a point is, friend. If you want the big ideas, you qualify for them. Mm -hmm. And God is looking. He is looking for those he can trust with those ideas to fund his assignments. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.